Hello guys, welcome back for another quick data factory video. This time is about identity columns and how to generate and use sequences in data flows. More often than not, you will need to create a dimension table in a star analytical schema. For that, it's required to have a unique key, which is a non-business key. And usually this is an incrementing key. We can achieve this by using the surrogate key transformation in data flows. However, as always, then there is an issue. When you run your pipeline again, the sequence will start from the beginning, resulting in generating the same unique key again, which will subsequently throw an error or cause an issue with the uniqueness of the key column. What we need to do is to perform a lookup activity in order to get the last number of the sequence that is already in the data and then start incrementing from there. I'm going to use Delta files as the target destination for this example. The scenario is much simpler if you use a database as you would be able to define a table with an identity column beforehand. Using Delta files, there is no alternative but to use a lookup activity. Let's move to Azure portal and I will show you what I'm talking about. In our blob storage, we have two CSV files containing email addresses. So if you click edit, you will see the data. We have one column with email addresses. Notice address number four, which is lpsnorwich.co.uk. And we have the same address, exactly the same address at the bottom of the second CSV file. The second CSV file also contains email addresses, except for this last one that uh, is similar in both CSV files. I will tell you why we do that. Let's move to Azure Data Factory. Let's create a new pipeline, drag and drop a data flow activity, and under settings, create a new data flow. Let's point to our first CSV file, Azure Blob Storage, click on CSV file format, continue, select your link service, specify the container. I have the input container and sec1.csv file. First row as header, click on OK. Under data preview, you will be able to see the data. And we have uh, a few email addresses, I think six. Yeah, right. And what we have to do now here in order to create a sequence, we have to use a surrogate key. Let's call this sequence, right? It starts from one and the step is one. So if we click data preview again, refresh the data, we will see an extra column with the sequence. You see here we have six email addresses assigned. We have assigned a sequence, a number to its unique number to its email address. Let's use a sync activity here that points to our destination container. And here, scroll down to find Delta format because we are going to use Delta format for our target um, data. Click on the se settings, specify your container. That for me, it's output container. Click on data preview, see the data. And we are going to run this pipeline. Let's run the pipeline and we will be able to see the data in Delta format in our output container. And we have already assigned a unique key, a unique number to its record in the data set, right? Our pipeline finished. So let's see the data. A quick way to check Delta data in your blob storage because you won't be able to see the data here. Uh, in your storage account because it's in Delta format. So if you click on edit, you will see nothing. Uh, but here there is one quick way. So add source, point to the output container where we have our Delta data. Select your link service and output. Now we point to the destination folder and we would be able to see the data so here is the data in the data preview, the data in our destination. The next thing we need to do according to the documentation is to actually add an aggregate function. And why we should do that? Because if we run this pipeline again, this sequence is going to start from one and we are going to generate the same unique keys. 
apparently this will cause an issue. So what we need to do is add a step here and uh, aggregate activity and under aggregates specify we need to get the max value of the sequence column in the dark in the target data set so let's call this max sequence right and enter an expression open expression builder and we need the max of the sequence column here we cannot see the columns so what we need to do here when uh, when this happens is go to the source and in projection import schema click on import and this will import the columns of the of the target data set now why we need to do that i don't know but here when we come back here if you open the expression builder you will be able to see the columns so use uh, a max here and get the max value of the sequence click on save and now the next thing we need to do is use a cross join because we want this value here if we click on refresh under aggregate i think we will get six because that was the last number yes and we need to bring the six into our next run so we need a cross join here select aggregate one for right stream and condition use one equals equals one and here now if you click on data preview you will see an extra column that has six for every record now if if you can imagine the next step that would be this addition of those two columns so six plus one would be seven six plus two would be eight etc etc so this is how we generate the new unique keys and we can do that by using a derived column and call it sequence again because we want to call it the same uh, column name and use sequence which is the sequence we created in the previous step plus right the uh, use coalesque here and use max sequence comma zero and why we use coalesque because if in the first one let's say we don't want to perform the initial run like i did we're going to create a pipeline you know from scratch uh, from the beginning and we don't want to uh, perform an initial run separately so we use the coalesque if the max if the max sequence uh, the max value of the sequence is the is zero so if there is no data actually in the first run in the target data set then we use zero as the max number click on save and finish but also here in the source what you need to do is click on the allow no files found if you don't tick that box here and you don't have data into the destination folder then you will get an error it's going to throw an error but yeah it's not very descriptive so you won't be able to understand why it threw an arrow just click this button here and that's why we use the coalesque in this case so if there's no data in the target in the destination folder then use zero as the max sequence we have three columns now but we want two so use a select here and let's delete the max sequence we want only email and sequence right and this will bring email and the new generated unique keys 7 8 9 10 11 etc etc now again i think uh yeah i missed something here in the source uh, normally we would use a parameter but he, let's say for this demo just point to the second to the second uh, data set that brings back uh, the new email addresses right but one is similar and what we have to do here let's refresh the data here in the data preview with the new addresses right and all this cool stuff so let's refresh here the data preview again and see the new email addresses with the new generated keys but remember we have one address which actually is the same it's similar in both data sets and this address now it has like uh, i think three or four 
as an ID, as a sequence, in the current destination folder, but we're going to update the ID. We're going to perform an absurd essential. So click on here and use alter row. So alter row and click on scroll down, use absurd if, enter condition, that would be if the condition is true, and at the target uh, in the sync activity under settings, use allow absurd and specify the key column that would be email so if the email already exists just update the id or if it doesn't exist assign a new id to this column and i think we are good to go so let's publish that and then run the pipeline again and see what happens see what we get Our pipeline runs successfully. Let's see the data again into our destination folder. So here under show settings in the output street name, just change the name because otherwise it uh, you know it it cast the day it casts the data. So just change the name or something to get the updated data. As you can see here, we have 19 email addresses. And here is uh, this email address, which was similar in both data sets, uh, was assigned the last uh, sequence in the second run, because you will not find it here, uh, here twice, right? So this is how you use the alter row and absurd. Now, you, apparently, you can use this, uh, well, it depends on the scenario and uh, the requirements of your task. This is it for today guys. This is how you create and use sequences in Data Factory according to the documentation. In case you are wondering what happens if you populate dimension tables simultaneously, then I recommend you run your pipelines sequentially, otherwise you will have an issue. As you can see, there are limitations in this approach. However, I believe it's useful to know. If you found this video insightful, click the like button button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.